Hi guys and welcome back and today we'll start on building the figures for the Castle Itadayo. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the kits or the quality or what have you, just really showing you the range of kits that I'm using for this. You can decide from hopefully if it's in focus. You can decide for yourself whether it's good, bad, or different. The Tamiya kits were typical Tamiya, Master Box was Master Box, etc., etc. All slightly different sizes, so some compatibility issues across brands, but within the brands themselves, the multi changeable limbs works fine. And uh, the only other figures were the Valendon resin figures. And look, they're always really, really nice. I think they're always slightly larger than your typical plastic kit. And the smaller parts are very, very brittle and subject to flash, and you have to be extremely careful. But again, if you've done any of these things, you'll know that. The machine gun itself was challenging, the 30 cal. Lots of little parts and lots of uh, tiny PE. And we'll um, start off by getting stuck into that. So I have to admit, I've approached the build of the 30 cal with a degree of trepidation. I'd previously tried to build a 50 cal uh, for a much earlier diorama, and it was a Valinden kit resin and PE, and made a complete hash of it, to be honest. So I was a little bit uh, nervous about this one, but in spite of the fragility of the um, resin and the small parts, and I mean, one of the legs did break, but it was easily stuck back together. And it came together surprisingly well. And, and again, the instructions, which I always feel are really superficial on the, uh, or very badly printed, so it's very hard to tell what's what. They were probably a little bit better, maybe because it was a little bit simpler than the 50 cal, but quite happy with the results overall. I won't go through all of the figure building, there's 12 of them, but I'll talk about some. So there'll be a sort of random collection of figures in terms of, I use different limbs. I never feel restricted by the initial fit because I think you can carve away and here I'm just carving away a slightly larger arm that wasn't meant to go with this figure or perhaps it was the right arm but uh, in the wrong position. You'll see as I go through my growing love affair with the Aves two-part epoxy and it really it really does save every situation. So I uh, approach these sorts of things with a lot more confidence and do a little bit of an initial clean up and then basically it's just carry on from there. So I'm just going to show a selection of figures. These two were heavily modified so they could work in tandem. And it's probably the only time you'll see them like this for the rest of the build and the painting until the final reveal. Basically, I'll just show various bits and pieces. I think you can see what's going on as, as well as I can explain it. So I'll talk about this. I needed a hollow helmet to go on the female figure's head and all the Tamiya ones, which looked right on her. Uh, we're not hollow, so just dremel that out and cleaned it up. And again, if you take your time and you're careful, you know you can get some pretty good results. So, I'll leave you for a bit of music. You can see what's going on here as well as uh, as I can explain it. And uh, I'll come back in a little while. So, just a bit of work on the head to make sure the helmet fit. I wanted it to look pressed down into the hair and not sort of sticking on the top like a, a bowler hat. And the other thing I did, which I spent a hell of a lot of time doing uh, for each and every figure holding a weapon, was to make sure the weapon really snugly fitted and looked realistic. So it's a lot of dry fitting and it. Look, it is a, a little bit of mucking around because you can't really lock the arms into place until you've got the weapon and the angle of the arm and the hands right. And But it's just a thing that I'm particularly fussy about. And I really like to see the hand gripping where it should be and the finger going through the trigger guard if it, it can do that. So... Here you can see being really careful, sort of getting the position right, a little bit of super glue, just a drop to hold things steady, and then you can reinforce that further on down the track. And then here, just uh, starting to work on the various figures 
with putting heads in and what have you. Now, as is my want, I can get distracted on really minor aspects of, a, of an overall diorama, and here you'll see me become a little bit fixated on working on the goggles for one of the tent crew and deciding I should drill that out, and then deciding that, oh, I might play around with different methods of making that look like it's the glass lenses. So, as you can see, I uh, fiddled around with the Dremel very carefully, and hard to hold such a small part, so I tried it in the blue tech initially, and that wasn't really working all that well because as I pushed it would just disappear further in and if I was going so light it didn't seem to be making an impression. So I persevered with that for a while but wasn't really getting anywhere as, as you can see. So managed to get a bit of foam on either side of it and get it into the clamp and that worked really well. It held it quite firmly uh, and that enabled me to get, uh, get stuck right into it with the Dremel which worked out quite well. So I decided I'd bought some clear resin uh, with a view to making bottles and, and some a sort of a honey colour resin pigment. So I thought I'll practice with this anyway, just to see how it looks and how, how it dries and all that sort of stuff. And look, for, from a practical point of view, the practice wasn't really meaningful because uh, it was such a small part, but uh, made up the resin. You've got a couple of minutes working time and I needed a couple of seconds, so you just use the dropper to get a little bit into the back of the lenses and on the theory that the clay itself would would keep it smooth with the front and uh, and then just let it dry and then whilst it looks horrible now and sadly I lost the footage of me cleaning it up but it's not a great loss because my hands obscured most of it anyway uh, but it actually cleaned up pretty well but the next time you'll see it will be uh, when it's stuck on his head so you won't see the back of it you'll only see the front of it. And here I'm just looking at the areas to be filled. So this is pretty much a figure straight out of the box, exactly how they um, show it. And now there's some real bad joins and, and gaps. So this is my favourite thing, the epoxy sculpt from Aves, the two-part epoxy resin. Made some up. I keep it on a clean surface so it doesn't pick up any dust or crap from the workbench. And then it's just a really matter of putting it on and, I, you know, just sort of poke around with it. You evolve your own tools. Sometimes... A toothpick seems to work well. Sometimes the exacto blade seems to work well. Again, I don't think there's a right and wrong. It's just whatever works. But uh, spend most of your time pushing it in and making sure it's nice and firm. And that actually gets easier the longer you, you leave it sit there. So the more it begins to set, the easier the getting it on process is. But the harder the smoothing out and leveling off. So I tend to have zero patience anyway. So I put it on pretty much as soon as I've made it. Sometimes I can force myself to wait five minutes or ten minutes, uh, but then I have to get into it. And But that makes the smoothing off so much easier once you've got it all sort of um, filled in and, and blocked out, basically. It's a bit like painting you set with putty. And these rubber-tipped sculpting tools that I got have just been invaluable. They're fantastic for getting things smoothed out. And you can start to create the corresponding creases and, and match that into the existing creases in the clothing. So, as I said, the getting it on seems to be the hardest part. Or maybe that's just me. I, I do struggle with it. I don't want to, you don't want to use it water too early because then it becomes a little bit difficult to control. And uh, just in the top left corner now, it's the uh, fast forward footage, this figure from start to finish, which I think in elapsed time here is only you know, 
10 or 15 seconds, but this figure itself took 30 minutes exactly to get all the putty in and then smoothed out, ready for it to um, just dry. Yeah, the good thing about the putty is that if you smooth it out nicely with a little bit of water right towards the end, it virtually needs no sanding. Uh, there might be a couple of little knobs and nooks that you need to get into, but largely very little supplementary cleanup work. And again, just sort of showing the process here about how I get the arms to fit with the weapon. And it is a bugbear in mind. And as you can see, this guy's arms way short. They're near the, I don't think they're the right arms for that figure. So it's a little bit of Frankensteining and just cutting in. And as I said, for me, this is one of the enjoyable aspects of the hobby. I really do like doing this sort of creating and, and rearranging. And uh, you know, with the with the right materials, you can pretty much get away with a lot of things. In this instance, my only concern was, was his left arm becoming unnaturally long? Like, so did he have a three foot long left arm compared to a two foot long right arm? But um, it'll be very hard to tell. And I, look, I didn't even get the ruler out to measure it. I measured overall, I think, on one of them because I thought he was starting to get a bit tall. But uh, by and large, pin them. You hold them in place with the pin before you glue. It gives you a little bit of flexibility to move. And as you'll see, it's sort of just jiggling it around until you get it vaguely right. And then a few dots of super glue here and there to uh, hopefully hold things in place and figure out how much wire you need to get gap between where the bits miss each other filled in. And some of it's just pure guesstimation I work and I think there's a couple of mil there so I'll leave you with this for a little while and come back shortly. So we might talk about this one for a little while because I had a vision in my mind of a very specific pose for one of the figures pressed against the castle wall and gesturing to some of the guys behind the barricade. 
and I couldn't find a figure, and this is sort of me going, well, I sort of want a half-crouched bottom, uh, like on the right, back pressed up against the wall, which was the figure on the left, so the top half of that, the bottom half of the other one. So this was my initial vision, and again, I had some issues with uh, losing some footage along the way, and uh, a bit of a disaster with a, a laptop decompression, uh, or explosion perhaps. So this figure transforms along the way, but I think it's worth having just to look at the again the process and to just encourage people to you know have a have a go at it and you can't really do too much wrong and I mean the the consequences if, if I got this wrong I've ruined a, a little bit of plastic and a, and a figure that I genuinely wasn't going to use in this or anything that I could foresee anyway so it's it's not a, a huge risk and it's just a good way of practicing and even if it doesn't come out well guys um, you still had to practice so. I also wanted this guy with his sleeves rolled up, so I had to use a German, I think it was a summer 1940 uh, German infantry figures, and that's just me filing off his back so he can fit flat against the wall and then just changing the pockets so it looks like a US shirt and doesn't have that line down the middle just to sort of keep some consistency along the way. So there's lots of parts to this. There's the German top with uh, most of the left arm. There's a, a completely different right arm. There's a hornet head. There's the uh, Tamiya legs, and I think I think his right arm might have been a master box, or ended up being a master box. But I wanted the arms uh, sleeves up for a very specific reason, which hopefully will become obvious towards the end of the um, painting video, which will be the one that comes out after this. And again, it was just preparing the figure for the specific spot on the dio where it was going to go and putting it together. You'll notice further on down the track that this figure actually changes from a standing figure to a kneeling figure. And that was because once I put it together, I was just really unhappy with the way it had come out. It was, it didn't have a, to me, it didn't have a natural posture and standing and maintaining the hand gestures that I wanted him to be maintaining looked a bit odd. And again, don't ask me why, but when I put it in a kneeling position, it looked a lot more natural. So, you know, it's just a, sometimes a matter of trial and error. And at the end of the day there, I, I lost the bottom leg. So for this, because there was such a big connection between the top and the bottom, I got some thick rod. I think it's two mil thick brass rod to be the connecting point. Use that to uh, with some super glue, so it was quite strong. <laughs> now, the interesting thing about that was a few days later when I decided that those were the wrong legs for that figure, it was a pain to get the legs off the top because I'd done a little bit of extra work along the top, and I was happy with that. So, yeah, sometimes your best plans aren't necessarily uh, all that successful. So anyway, just have a look at some of the work that goes on here, uh, and don't be surprised when later on the the, the top appears on different uh, bottoms.
and there he is, and as if by magic, two seconds ago he was standing up, and now he's uh, kneeling down. He, that they are the kneeling legs. And so here I'm just marking the hairline with a black felt tip pen, a 0.5, I think it is, so very fine, uh, which I've actually, well, give you an advanced preview, I used in a couple of instances for doing eyeballs on some of the figures that you'll see in the next video. And uh, I was pretty, I was actually pretty happy with the result of that. So just marking out the hairline here, because I'm going to use the Aves to make sure I get it right. And again, for reasons that will hopefully become obvious in the painting video, I wanted it to look very specifically like the subject I was modeling it on. And from this point on, things wind up fairly rapidly. So just use my homemade drill to put the holes in the feet for the thicker wire to hold for the painting process. So I know that's the drill that is the same size as those those wires, or that wires fits into it. It's a little bit, it's got a little bit of play, so a little bit of super glue, uh, and I don't have to go um, rummaging around. So this is all the guys now on their stands, ready to be primed. And like with all my building videos, I'll take it through and show you the primed versions and that's where we'll stop and then move on in the next video to the actual painting. So when I've got a lot of figures like this to paint, Typically, I normally just do a few drops at a time into the airbrush. If you're just doing one or two figures, you know, 10 drops of colour and five drops of thinners or whatever. It depends what the paint is, of course. So that's not a formula, don't quote me. But because I had all 12 figures and I wanted to do them at once, I just made up. And I didn't want to have a situation where I'd got 10 of them done and, and ran out and then had to mix up some other ones. So I just made up, a, I think these are 30 mil shot glasses from memory so i basically just mixed up 50 50 mix in this particular instance using the vallejo gray primer and the airbrush thinners and so then i've got a you know a, a good 30 mils worth and that should see you through the whole journey so a little bit of footage of spraying figures which you've all seen but for consistency i like to go through the whole process and i'll come back to say goodbye very very soon And that's pretty much it. So just a bit of a scan across the primed dozen. And next up will be the painting. So I'm looking forward to that. Lots of different uniforms, German uniforms, US uniforms, US tank uniforms, some civilians, the female figure. So yeah, quite a quite a degree of variation. 
And that's it, guys. So look, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I certainly looking forward to getting this diode finished and it's looming very close. So thank you very much for watching. If you're not already subscribed, perhaps subscribe so you don't miss any of the updates. I know this was a long time between drinks, but I've got myself a little bit more organized now. So I should have a, a bit more consistency in posting. And if you like, thumbs up. Look forward to reading your comments. Take care all. Catch you next time. Bye.